Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf, which is Be'ya Daf Yud Gimel. We begin on Yud Be'ez Amad Be'ez, two lines from the bottom. It says the Gemara, Imkain, if so, what is the Gemara going back to? Yesterday we learned in the name of Rava. He had a Chiddush for us that although you're not meant to actually thresh grain on Yom Tif, however, if it's done in a backhanded way, K'l'achar Yad, such as Picking the grain right off the stalk, rubbing, rolling the stalk manually and extracting the grain in that manner. That's Disha, but Kalachar Yad, and although an Isser the Rabbanon on Shabbos, but on Yom Tif, Chacham suspended the Isser on account of Simchas Yom Tif, Eichel Nefesh, they allow you to extract your grain in this manner. So according to Rava, rubbing, rolling the Malilis, meaning extracting the grain straight out of the stalk, or seeds of mustard out of the uh, mustard stalks, is mutter on yamtiv. Says the Gemara Imkain, if that's the case, that you can actually extract seeds on yamtiv, why did the Mishnah tell us that there's no possibility, there's no option of having the Chiv Turuma arrive on yamtiv? We learned yesterday in the Mishnah that you certainly can't deliver Turuma to a coin on Yom Tov because you have no right to separate it on Yom Tov. What do you mean, says the Gemara Cain, if that's the case, that you can be Moilel Melilais and bring it to its finished state on Yom Tov, which would activate the Chi of Truma, which would obligate you to separate Truma today? In Cain Matsina, Truma Shezakai Baramosa. Oh, you found a case where you are allowed to separate Truma and Yom Tov. The Gemara is assuming if it turned into a finished product on Yom Tov, which activates the Tevel aspect, activates the Chi of Truma, then you meant to separate it on Yom Tov. Here we have a case. A case where Truma arrived on Yom Tov. And in the Mishnah we learned, Loi, Im Amras, with Truma, you can't compare the Chala to Truma. Shein is about a Masa. Truma is not something which you can separate on Yom Tov. Here we have a case where you can. Like Hasha, the answer is, depending Whose shita we're following? Oh, Rabbi. According to Shita's Rabbi, you're 100% right. This uh, Malila process activates the Chi of Truma. It becomes Tevel and requires separation of Truma, although you're not eating it in the conventional way. Typically, they would actually thresh all the stalks, pull out all the kernels, pile them up, and that's considered a finished grain, rather than just pulling them off the stalks and eating them directly like that. But according to Rebbe, that's also considered a finished grain, a finished process, Gemar Malacha, and it's Chayv and Truma. So you're right, according to Rebbe, you would have a Kasha. Har Rebbe Yisra Rebbe Yehuda, but our Mishnah, which indicated there is no Chayv Truma that can arrive on Yom Tov, is the other Shit of Rebbe Yisra Rebbe Yehuda, the son you learned in Ebrais. Heich Nesshi Balin Lasses Men Isa. If he delivers Shibalin, stalks into his house, with the intent to process it properly, to take the kernels, to grind them, turn them into flour, and into a dough eventually. Oichel mehen arai upater. So since he hadn't yet finished the process, he has yet to thresh, to winnow, to pile it up in a in a cree in a pile, which would cons- which would complete the process. He's still before that. An unfinished product can be eaten achilas aray. You can have a snack from it and still be potter from Maser. That's because it's unfinished. Whatever, what happens if it's lemoilulam b'melilis? He delivered it to his home with the intent to eat it bit by bit straight off the stalk. Rabbi Mechaev. According to Rabbi, it's Chayev and Truma right now. Why? Because it's finished. There's nothing else to be done. He's no longer going to process it any further. So bringing this material into the home creates the chiv truma. It gives it chashiv. It's, oh, now it's ready to be eaten. So introducing the item into the home when he has no plans of adding any further process to this material. It's considered gemar malach. It's considered ready for a meal. 
but it has chashivas, and it's chayiv and truma. Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda Poiter, going to Rabbi Yehuda. This is not chayiv and truma. Pasuk says, "Degoncha." Rashi explains, "Ain digun elokibutz bekri." Finished grain has to be piled up in a kri, a pile. That's called dogan. That's chayiv and truma. But if you're going to eat it straight off the stalk, piece by piece, that's not called dogan. It's not called proper grain. And that wouldn't be chayiv and truma and maser. Oh, so that answers our question. Our Mishnah said that there is no chayiv truma and yantiv. What do you mean? Meilu melilis is mutar and yantiv, which would activate truma. Answer is no. According to Rabbi Yisrael, that's not chayiv and truma. It's not dogan. According to Rabbi, you have a point. There is a possibility of a chayiv truma arriving on yantiv. Which is Chayv and Truma. Well, Rabbi Yisi, Rabbi Yehuda, Nami Meshkach Islam. One second, according to Rabbi Yisi, we can still find a possible scenario where Truma arrives on Yom Tev, Kigayim. Shehechnes Shibalin, he brought the stalks into his home with the intent to do what with it? La Soismehen Isa, to form it into a dough, to thresh it, to winnow it, grind it. So it's unfinished. But the delivery, bringing it into the home, was a proper delivery. It was what the machshava to really process it properly. So phase one has been accomplished. The delivery was a proper delivery. He introduced it to his home for domestic use. It's just a, a pending status. He has to wait. He has to await the finishing of that, pro- of that processing. But the initiation has begun. Delivery in itself gives it chashivas. Look, it's intended for domestic use. I'm going to use it properly. Form it into a dough. That's where he's holding. So at this point, it's it's still pending. What happened? He changed his mind. Once it arrived into his home, so to achieve that first um, state, that first stage was accomplished. He had a change of heart. I'm no longer going to process. I'm just going to be moilo. I'm going to eat it right off the stalk. So even according to Rabbi Yehuda, in this case, it would be chayv and truma. Why? Explains Rashi. Because since the first phase of Gemar Malacha had been accomplished, when he brought it into the home, what did he have in mind? He didn't have Malilas in mind, which is the unconventional way of consuming it. He had a proper plan in mind. I'm going to turn it into a dough. So the Hachnosel of Bayes already gives it Chashivas. So now when he changed his mind, once it's already in his home and he decided to use it for Malilas, which would indicate that no more processing is needed. That's it. I'm going to eat it as is, straight off the stalk. It's called Gmar Malacha. It gets a din of gurin, of grain, a finished product. It sort of combines with the fact that you brought it into your home and now it's finished. Right? Bringing it into the home itself gives it chashivas. And now that I decide I'm going to eat it as is, so the process has not been completed. If I bring it in the shame malilis, I'm going to have it in this unconventional way. So the bringing it into the home is not a proper delivery. You're not really introducing it for proper domestic use. You're going to eat it off the stalks. That's, that's not called a proper domestic use. But if I'm bringing it in to use it properly. So that's a conventional hachnos alabayis. And now I decide, you know what? It's good as it is. So now the process has been completed. You brought it in, and now it's finished. And now it's chayv and truma Has a din of gur, has a din of finished product, finished grain. The tavla biyaymi. So this this happened on yamtiv. He had this change of heart on yamtiv. Even according to the base of Yehuda, the tavla biyaymi. It would turn into tavla right then and there. Truma on yamtiv. So even according to Rabbi we have a situation where the chayv truma is applied on yamtiv itself. That's a kashin al Mishnah. That there is no true manyamtiv. Says the Gemara. Elamai, truma, raif truma. So you have to say like this that the Mishnah is following all shittas. Rabbi, Rabbi Sir Yehuda. And even though you've come up with situations where there can be true manyamtiv. The Mishnah is not referring to those isolated cases. 
the most part. Rav Truma, typically there is no Chiv Truma on Yom Tif. Chiv Truma generally results from a proper processing process. Disha, Miruach, Kriya, that doesn't happen on Yom Tif. So you happen to come up with some unconventional method to bring about a Chiv Truma, Moila Malila, etc. Okay, you're right. But typically there is no Chiv of Truma of Yom Tif. And therefore, the Mishnah works. The Mishnah is trying to say, look, Truma is not something which you're meant to really do on Yom Tif. Typically it doesn't happen on Yom Tif. So you don't have the allowance as you have by the Chal and the Matonis. Omar Abayi, Machleik is Bishibolim. You meant to know that this discussion between Rebbe, who says that Melilis has a din of Gemara Malacha and is Chayiv and Truma, whereas Rabbi Yezir Rehuda disagrees, that's only when it comes to Shibolim, stalks of grain which are generally processed properly, threshed, winnowed, piled up as finished grain. Abba Bekitnius, when it comes to beans, where many people just take off a bit at a time, straight off the stalks. And throw it into their pot. It's, a, it's something which is consumed bit by bit. Divrei Akol all agree is raisa when they're still in their bundles. Tavla can become tevel. So you bring it home to use it in this manner. That makes it tevel. It's considered a finished product. Lemi Masayeli perhaps will have a right from the brisa, actually a mission in Tumas, which says like this: Misha Tilson. This fellow had bundles of Tilson, some type of beans used as seasoning for spice, shell tevel, they were tevel, harezit kaisish. So this fellow will go ahead and crush them to extract the seeds, umachashim, and he'll figure out, he'll estimate, how much uh, seeds does he have? Umafresh alazer, he'll do the afrash truma based on how many seeds there are, v'en umafresh alo eitz, without reckoning for the stalks, for the stems themselves, which aren't edible. So here we have a Mishnah referring to bundles, intact bundles, as being tevel. How do you get that? My love, Rabbi Yisib Rehudahi. Shall we not say that perhaps this is even Rabbi Yisib Rehuda? The Amar Hasam Tevel, who maintains that when it comes to grain, which isn't generally used in this manner, it won't consider, he won't consider it tevel. Hacha Tevel, when it comes to beans, we do otherwise. We consider it to be a finished product in tevel. That's right. To Abayi, who says, but beans all agree. It's an accepted manner of consumption and has a din of goyrin, a din of dug, a din of gemar merlach and tevel. Loi says, more Rebbe, perhaps this Mishnah is Rebbe, just as by grain he holds, there's tevel in this manner. Likewise, by beans, but according to our base, how do you know? Perhaps just as by grain, there is no tevel in this manner. Likewise, by beans. E Rebbe, says, more if this would be Rebbe, then how do we understand the Mishnah? Why would the Mishnah discuss Tilson? My area Tilson. Why would you pick Tilson as an example to highlight, to present this halacha? That even bundles can have a din tevel according to Rebbe. I feel a shibal and nami. The Mishnah could have cited a greater chiddush, even stalks of grain would have the same concept. That's a greater chiddush. Even grain which isn't generally consumed in this manner. So if it's Rebbe, why pick the lesser Chiddush? Should have gone for the greater Chiddush. Elamai Rabbi Yisif Yehuda. So what do you want to say? It's Rabbi Yisif Yehuda. And he even agrees that it's Tevel because beans are different and consumed in this manner. Lushmina Sharmina Kitnis. Why wouldn't the Mishnah discuss other types of legumes of beans? The Koshkan Tilson and certainly Tilson would be self-understood, meaning Rashi explains that Kitnis is something which is very often just tossed into the pot as is with the stems and stalks intact. Because as we're going to learn soon that the Tilson branch itself also contains the same flavor as the seeds. The mission should have said a greater Chiddush. Even kidneys, ordinary beans. According to Rabbi Yisibar Yehuda, considered Gemar Malach, if he plans on consuming it right off the stalk. Had the mission said that, we certainly would derive that Tilson is included in that halacha because Tilson is something which is very often used in this manner. So that's the kasha. If it's Rabbi Yisrael Yehuda, we should have discussed a different case, which is a greater chiddush. Says more apparently, this uh, Mishnah is really Rebbe. And Rebbe is the one that holds that Moilo Melila is by grain, by ordinary stalks, is called Mar Mulach, is considered Tevel, and therefore 
by the Tosan as well. It's all Rabbi Shita. You have no right that Rabbi Yisrael would agree by Kitnis. It's all Rabbi, perhaps. What was the question? So why discuss Tilson to bring out the halacha of Rebbe? We should have mentioned a greater chiddush. Even grain, even stalks, shibbalim have the same halacha. Ela Tilson and Strichla. You know why we mentioned Tilson? Because that contains a chiddush. I mean, perhaps I can think, Since the Tilson plant has a unique feature, where the eights and the pre have the same flavor, the stem and the seed contain similar flavor. Therefore, when it comes to doing truma, I would think you have to account for the stems as well. Live first, so you have to separate truma from the wood part as well, because they're both they both serve as, as a seasoning. Kamashmon the chiddush is no. Fact is, this is edible. This isn't edible. So there really, really isn't the right to abai. Once again, abai says that the machlek is applies to. Grain. Rabbi says, Melila is called Gemar Malacha. Rabbi Yisrael really disagrees. But when it comes to kidneys, which we very often find people using in this manner, all agree it's Gemar Malacha. We thought we had a Raya. We find a Mishnah that Tilson is considered Tevil even while it's still in its stem stalk form. Conclusion is no. Perhaps it's Rabbi speaking. The reason why you mentioned Tilson and not other items, not stalks of grain, etc., because Tosan contains an added chiddush, a truma-related chiddush. You don't have to account for the stems within your truma, hafrash. Ikidami, there's another version of Abayi. Amar Abayi, machlekes v'shibol. The machlekes applies only to stalks of wheat, of grain. Rabbi says, Moilu Malilis is considered conventional enough. It's called Gmar Malach. Rabbi Zerida says, no, that's not the way it's ordinarily done. That's not called dog, it's not called finished grain. Ava Bekitis, when it comes to legumes, beans, where nobody generally consumes them in this manner, Divri Akol all agree is Surais or Tavla. Stalks, while they're still, still on their stems, all agree it's not going to become Tevel, it's not considered a finished product. Interesting, Teza says, we never find in the entire Shas that one version of the Gemara would totally overturn. The previous version, like an Algamar. The first Lashon we have that uh, Kitni is certainly is called Gemar Malach. And the second Lashon we say just the opposite. Kitni is all agree. It's not called Gemar Malach. Continues Gemara. Misve. Let's have a Kasha on Abayi's second version. Abayi's second version was when it comes to Kitni, all agree this is not the way to process it. There is no Tevil involved. Mi Shahil Chavil Tilson. This is the mission that we just mentioned. He had bundles of Tilson. Shell Tevel. What does he do? So he crushes, he extracts the seeds. Umachashev. And he'll reckon Kamazerish and how many seeds there are. Umafrash Allah Zera. He'll do truma on the Zera. He doesn't have to do truma on the wood aspect. So that's the mission. My love should we not assume when the mission speaks about the bundles being Tevel, Tevel. Tavel shall truma. It's Tavel in the owner's, in the farmer's hands, meaning it's the conventional type of Tavel, finished product that the farmer has to separate tumor from, apparently. Even grain, even uh, seeds, seasoning in this form is considered Tavel. It's a Kashan Abayu who says that God to all when it comes to anything other than grain, you don't apply this halacha to. It says, well, like, no. Tavel, Tavel shall truma smasa. If it would be in the hands of the owner of the farmer, that's not considered finished grain, it's not considered dogon, there is no tevel. Rather, we're speaking about a unique type of tevel, stage two of tevel. Tevel, which is a tevel for trumas masa. What does this mean? What happened was that instead of the farmer giving the truma and masa in proper order, he meant to start with truma gedoyla to the kain, then masa rishon to the levi. Who turns around, takes a tenth of his maserishin, and gives that to the coin that's Truma's maser. What happened was the levy jumped the gun. He arrived early. And the farmer gave maserishin to the levy first. And he came when it was still in its stalk form. We're going to learn the Gemara later. That is a chiddush we learned from a Pasik. And when it comes to maserishin, it can be applied even to grain 
or seeds or beans in their stock form, even though they're as yet an unfinished product. And you know, the Chiv Trumagdel has not yet even been activated at this point. It's not a finished product, but the Levi can go, go ahead of the Kain, come early and take his portion. And once that happens, what you give the Levi, it becomes Maserishan to the extent that it turns into Tevel with respect to the Trumas Maser contained in it. Meaning that the Levi can't exempt himself from Trumas Maser by saying, well, it's an unfinished product, there's no Tevel yet. Well, you took it as Maserishan. You've indicated that this is considered something that Trumas and Maser applied to. So once that happens, he has to turn around and give a tenth of his Maserishan to the coin as Trumas Maser. So that's what we're speaking about in this case. So it's not ordinary tevel. Ordinary tevel wouldn't apply to an unfinished product. The farmer has not chayiv in trumas and masters at this point, when it's still in the, in the bundle form. But if it just so happened to be that he jumped ahead and gave the levy his chalik, which works, we learn that from the Pasuk, that portion now has a din tevel, which means that the Trumas Maser aspect within that Maserishan becomes activated and has to be given to the coin. So the Merloi, not your typical Tevel, Tevel Tevel Shal Trumas Maser, Ukhdi Ravo, Omer B'Shem Malakish. Just as the Ravo tells us, Name of Shem Malakish, Doma Rabbi Vo, Omer B'Shem Malakish, Maserishan, Sheik Dima B'Shibon, the farmer, went ahead of the order. When Shalai Kaseda, he was Magdim, he gave the Maserishan in advance, he gave it while still B'Shibon, before the Chiv of Trumagdel was even activated. Shmoyet The fact is, he called it Maserish and he gave it to the Levi. Then itself generates a shame tevel, which means that the Chelik coin within that Maserish, that 10%, that Trumas Masa becomes activated, and Maser, the Levi has to give that Chelik to the coin. So again, the Gasha was, Abai tells us that unfinished beans, kidneys, can be considered chai for Tumas and masters. Sorry, Abayi said, when it comes to beans, all agree. If it's unfinished, there's no Tumas, there's no Tevel. Here we have a Mishnah, which seems to indicate otherwise. Tevel says, no. It's been a unique case. We gave it to the Levi. In advance of the coin, then itself generates a new, unique type of Tevel. So, in conclusion, when do we say that Lemoilulam be is turns into Tevel? So we have grain, Shibolan, we have kidneys, beans, seeds for seasoning. Now we had a Machlekes Rebbe and Rabbi Yisrael Yehuda, and two versions of Abai. In version one, when it comes to Shibolan, ordinary grain, Rebbe says, Moilulam be Melilois, that's good enough to be considered a finished product, and there's a Chiv of Turma Masu. According to Rabbi Yisrael Yehuda, that's not called Daga, there's no Chiv of Turma Masu. However, when it comes to kidneys, which many people will eat in this manner, that's considered finished enough, and chayiv and truma masu. According to version 2 of Abayi, machlag is applied only to shibol, stalks of grain. When it comes to kidneys, all agree, that's not considered a proper way of consumption, that's not called gemar malach, that's not called dagan, and there is no din tevel. We concluded that in the case where the levy beat the kain to the farm, and he took his portion while still in its stalk form, and that in itself turns it into tevel, it gives a chashivas, in which case the Levi has to turn around and give 10% of his maserish to the coin in the form of trumas maser. Continues the Gemara. Kaisish. So we learn that this Mishnah, which discusses the bundles of Tilsim, as being chayiv and tevel, is not speaking about your conventional tevel, rather it was given to the Levi prematurely. And the Levi has to turn around, crush the grain, and hand over a portion of that to the coin in the form of Tumas Maser. Kaisish, why does he have to crush it and process it? Lamali, Lamali, why does he have to do that? Kaisish Lamali. Lamali, the Levi can turn to the coin and say, Look, how did I get my portion? In stock form, unprocessed. I'll take a portion of that and give it to you in the same state. Why do I have to become a, a grain processor? Lame Malay can turn to the coin and say, just as they gave me my chilek in an unprocessed form, I'll give it to you in the same manner. It was a penalty applied to the levy. What are you doing? 
forbidding the kain to the farm. Don't you know you meant to take your master rishon only after the kain came to take his portion? So it's a knas. You have to trouble yourself, process it, and give it to the kain. So perhaps the kain would have would have come in time and he would have gotten it after processing. Why are you beating him to it and taking it while it's still raw? And now he's going to have to go process it himself. No, so you have to go finish it, process it, and give it to the kain. Tanami hachet. I've arrived from a brisa to this halacha. Ben Levi shenas nuloi shibal b'maas reisa. If the Levi was given his master in stock form, ois ois and goyin. Levi has to go process it into a goyin, into a finished grain, and then give the chel to the kain. Likewise, anavim. If he took grapes prematurely, ois ois and yain. Has to process it into wine and then give it to the kain. Zeisim. If he took olives before it was processed, ois ois and shemen. He has to turn it into oil and then give it to the coin. Uma for shalem trumas master. Then he takes off a tenth of his maseration as trumas master. Then nois on the coin and gives it to the coin. Why? Shekeshem shet truma gedola. Just as truma gedola, the first truma that the farmer is meant to give to the coin, eden etelas element agorin will only be separated once. The grain was finished grain. Umina yekev once the wine was fully processed, sitting in the wine pit. Kach Trumas Maser. Likewise, Trumas Maser conforms to the same guidelines. Just as Truma Gedoyla needs to be done in this man, Rashi says, the Pasuk says, Dogon Tirosh Vietza, processed products. Kach says, the Gemara Trumas Maser, Ene Netelas, Elman Agurin, Umar Yekev has to be taken from finished products. And then Farshim explains what the Gemara really means is that since Trumas Maser has to be given the same way Truma Gedoyla is given, in this case, we trouble the lady to actually process it himself. He can't tell the coin, look, you want your portion, come help me process it. No, he has to do it himself because he took it prematurely. It's a knas. Okay, continues the Gemara. Machashiv. Let's go back to the Mishnah. We say that the, uh, the person taking off the truma will estimate how much he needs to separate and give it to the coin. Now, let's think for a second. Initially, we thought that the Allah applies to the farmer. When we say the tilson becomes tevil, it means the farmer has to uh, be mekayim all the dinim because it's tevil. So first thing he does is truma gedoyla. Now truma gedoyla, as we're going to see soon, is separated in an estimated fashion. You don't measure, you don't weigh, you don't count. It's all estimation. That would explain why the mission speaks about mechashev. You just estimate. But according to your pshat, that we're not speaking about the farmer. Why? Because unfinished grain would be non tell as far as the farmer is concerned. Rather, the lady came and beat the coin to the farm. He took it in stock from it. That's why it becomes tell, as we explained. If it's the lady doing the truma now, which is truma's master, that has to be measured with exactness. Machashev? You can just estimate. How many did the boy has to measure? Truma's master has to be a tenth. Pasuk says, Maser mena Maser. Maser, from the, from the word Eser. Has to be a tenth. How much did boy? How can you just estimate? He has to measure. Hamani, who's speaking in this mission? Abba Lozer ben Gimel. It's a new sheet of the sun. Abba Lozer ben Gimel Omer. The same concept, the same manner, which you mafresh truma gedola by estimation applies to truma's master as well. For nechshav lachem true maschem. Torah says your truma is will be nechshav, and the drush is bishtei truma sakosav medab. We're speaking about both types of truma. Achas truma gedola that the farmer separates for the coin. Vachas truma smaser that the levy separates for the coin. And we compare the two trumas. Ma kishem she truma gedola just as truma gedola and tell us ba'oyimedu machshav. Just as truma gedola is not going to be measured with exactness. It's given by estimation. Oymet. Torah doesn't give a shear. Torah says ratios to gancha. Give a little bit. Chacham actually gave a shear, a fortieth, a fiftieth, a sixtieth. But when I told you, there is no exact shear. Umachshav. Not only that, <laughs> you can actually designate trumagdola by simply thinking. You can make remote control trumagdola. You don't have to actually physically separate in order for it to be chal ashem trumagdola. So just as that applies to trumagdola, kach trumas maser. Likewise, by trumas maser, follows the same guidelines. They tell us boimet machshav will be separated by way of estimation and simply by way of machshav. So we're following this sheet of Abit Lazar and Gimel. And therefore, when it comes to Tumas Master as well, Mishnah mentions Machshav.
Goof, let's go back for a minute. If the farmer separated Masarishan when it was still prematurely, it was still premature, it was still in its stock form. The fact that he called it Masarishan, that activates the um, Tevel status pertaining to the Trumas Maser element found within the Maserishan, as we explained earlier. My time, how does this work? Why? Why would you say that? Because it got a title. It was titled Maser. We're going to see soon in the Psukim that the Torah introduces a new type of Maser. Even if it was separated prematurely, in advance of the coin, in advance of the Gemara Malacha even, it's considered Maserishan. And therefore, says the Gemara, once it's called Maserishan, what does the Pasuk say? When the Levi gets Maserishan, what does he have to do? Give a tenth to the coin. So once it's considered Maser, you have to take a tenth and give it to the coin. If the Maserishan was separated while it was still in a stock form, before it was finished, before it got the Chiv of Truma at all, Potter, Matruma Gedolah, Going forward, this maceration will be exempt from Truma Gedoyla. So the lady actually saved on it. Because had he waited for the coin to take his portion from the, uh, from the granary, he would have only gotten 10% of the remainder. So he, uh, he jumped the gun, he went ahead of the coin. He wasn't supposed to do it. But if he did it, the portion that he gets, the maceration that's given to him in stock form, is exempt from Truma Gedoyla. So all he needs to do is turn around and give 10% of that to the coin, but that's it. He doesn't have to address the Truma Gedoyla within it. Because it's pot, Shenema. Barimoy, semimenu Truma Sashem, ma semena mas. Pasuk says that the mas erishin given to the Levi has an element of Truma's mas. Barimoy, semimenu, we have to separate from the mas erishin, Truma Sashem, ma semena mas, a tenth of that tenth. We learn from here. You only separate once. A tenth of that, that's it. But not two separate separations. The Levi is only obligated to give 10% to Masmasa, but not to Magadola. Only a Papa Labaye says, If we have a pass, the Levi is only obligated to give one thing to the coin and not two. Suppose the Levi advanced the coin. He came before the coin, but the grain has already been finished. Finished product. It's already a cree. It's piled up. All the chiyuv and matrumas and masters have been activated. It's full-fledged legal tevel. Perhaps even then, once the Levi grabs his portion, he'll be part of a truma We have a pasuk. That all he needs to give to the coin is truma samasa. That's why the Pasuk says, It's a reboy. Now in this case, no, it's too late. You came when it was ready in the grain form. It was ready to have, It was ready to have, it was You can't uproot that chiv. Just because you took your portion and left, you have to turn around and give the kain his truma gedoyla, which was already activated before you arrived. That's what we learn from this next Pasuk. Umar how do you know it's applying to this case? Hai Idgan, very simple. In this case, it was too late. It was already dug, it was already finished grain. The Chiv of Truma has been activated. You can't just relieve it of its Chiv. Vailei Idgan. But when he arrived on it, it's still in its stock farm. It was still prior to having achieved the Dagan status. And that's what we learned from the Pasuk. If you take his portion at that point, all he has to do is Truma Smaser, but not Truma Gedalah. Continues the Gemara. It's not awesome. We learned in a Mishnah Mesechas Masris. Hamakalif, sir. If he peeled some barley kernels, Mekalif Achas, Achas Oichel. He can peel one at a time and eat it right away and be exempt from Truma Masr. It's not considered Gemara Malacha. It's Achilas Arai. It's an unfinished product. So although he's peeling it, but since he's peeling and eating one at a time, he's potter. Vim Kilif, Venosan Sech Yodechai. But let's say he peeled and then placed the kernel into his hand. So once he places it down, he gives it chashivas. It's like he developed it, he produced something. 
That's Gemara Malacha. That's Kva. That's Chayv and Mas. Amar Belazer v'chein the Shabbos. Here comes a Chiddush. Shabbos works along the same guidelines. So this is just a, a quick snack, peeling and eating, peeling and eating. That's fine. But if he peels and places it down, he has done a malacha. Which malacha? Extracting a kernel from its skin is mafarak. It's, it's disha. And he's chayiv. Aini says, Gemara, is that so? That's considered gemar malacha for Shabbos as well. But Rav, look what happened in Rav's home. Makafle dvisu, his wife would peel for him. Kasi, kasi, cupfuls on cupfuls on Shabbos. Apparently, it's called derech achila. It's just for the sake of immediate consumption. That's not considered a proper processing job. Peeling, that's not, that's not threshing, that's not a real malacha. Peeling for immediate use, that's not a problem. Likewise, Rabbi Chia, look what happened in his home. Makafle dvisu, kasi, kasi, his wife would peel many, many uh, uh, kernels of, of barley, cups and cups full. Eli itmar seif itmar. Says the more you write, where Rabbi Lezah says, that it's called the Gemar Melech of Shabbos. He wasn't referring to that case that we just mentioned. Putting down the grain after peeling it wouldn't be considered a Gemar Melech of Shabbos. For Maser, yeah. So the finished product. They didn't really accomplish, they didn't process anything. It's not a Melech of Shabbos. Eli itma, rather, if we learned Rabbi Lezah's halacha, was a seif itmar, the next halacha. Listen to the rest of the next halacha. Amoy lo melilu shalchit. Melila is are these stalks with the grain intact. So he's rolling, he's rubbing these stalks to extract the kernels. So now he has grain mixed in with the skins. He can fan it, he can blow it a little at a time. But and have it like that with any uh, concerns of Truma and Maser. It's just a chila sarai, it's just a chila. It's not considered a finished product. Oh, listen to this. But if he bunches it up, let's say chekei on his lap. So he's piling it up. He's processing. He's developed. He's producing something. Then it's Chayv and Maser. Here comes Rebbe Lezer and he says, oh, if he went this far on Shabbos, he processed. He developed. He did a malacha of Disha. Amar Rebbe Lezer v'chem Shabbos. So again, if it's just eating one at a time, or even filling up cupfuls. So for Maser, that's a problem. Because unless he eats just one at a time, anything more than that is considered Gemara Malacha for Masa. But when it comes to Shabbos, unless he actually piles it up, let's say Chekai, it wouldn't be a problem. Maska for Rabbi Abraham. Listen to this Kasha. Veresha, when it comes to the first case, you're telling me there's a difference between Masa, where even a slight processing job is considered enough to make Tevel, as opposed to Shabbos, where you need something more significant. Veresha, in the first case, Le Masa in. It's only considered processed for Masa. But Le Shabbos, but not pertaining to Shabbos. Can you differentiate between the two that will work along the same track? Is there then something the Indian Shabbos will have a Gemara Malach when it comes to Shabbos it's not considered a Malach and it's not Chayv will have a Gemara Malach and it would be considered for Maser? How can you be Machalik? Maser for the of Sheish is Breda of Eidah what do you mean? Veloi? No difference between Shabbos and Maser? Totally different different discussions Vagarna and Maser let's say you uh, you piled up your, your fruit. You made a gurin. You made a finished product when it comes to maser. That's not as we learned in the next mission. Ezu gurin on the maser. Let's go through various um, items and figure out when is the chi of maser activated. When is considered a finished product? It doesn't need much. Hakishum vadlun. Gourds, melons. Mishi pox. Once the blossom falls off, finished product. Tell gets activated. We shall lay paksu before the blossom falls off. Shiam daremo. So he piles it up. It's considered a finished product. And it's chayv and maser. But tonight I'm going to have Find the same by onions. Shiam daremo. Once he piles it up, it's considered a processed product. It's chayv and maser. That's when it comes to maser. Vilu gabi shabbos. When it comes to shabbos, nobody in the world is going to say if you pile up some fruit in your home, you chayv. So we see they work based on different concepts. Hamada sarema pot. If you pile up a, a pile of fruit, vegetables, you're not chayiv. It's not a malacha. So you see that the the term gemar malacha is defined very differently when it comes to Shabbos. Elamai islachlamim. Apparently, you have to say that Shabbos is different. Where, where do we learn the malacha? Says Shabbos from the fact that the Torah 
mentions Shabbos near Melechus HaMishkan. So the 39 Melechus, those significant acts of, of craftsmanship, which are done in the Mishkan, cannot be done on Shabbos. Melechus Machshavos Asr Torah. Why is something which has Chashiv as a true craft is Asr on Shabbos? Piling up onions? Certainly not. Although when it comes to Maser, it's considered a finished product. Hachanami, here as well, when it comes to the peeling the grain. Malachas Machshavos Asr Torah. Although when it comes to Maser, if you do something just more than the minimal processing, it's considered a finished product, a chayv of Maser. Not by Shabbos. Shabbos mech Shabbos. You need something serious. You need to create, to fashion, to form, to build. Unlike Maser, where it's just a question of designation and labeling. Once it's been designated for personal use, designated for marketing, the Chiv Master gets activated. When it comes to Shabbos, you have to create, to fashion, you have to form, develop, produce. And therefore, in this case, we took a few uh, kernels and peeled them, put them in his hand. Of course, it's not considered a significant processing job. And there's no Chiv on Shabbos. Continues the Marquette at Moil. So we mentioned earlier that on Yom Tev you can roll grain. As opposed to Shabbos. On Yom Tov you can roll grain. It's called Disha Kalachar Yad. Lutzerich Yom Tov Tachamu Amater. How do you do that? Abayi Mishmed Rav Yisif Omer. Chado Achado. Rashi explains. Although we're allowing this, but it has to be done in a way which deviates from the norm. You can't do it the way it's done during the weekday. You have to show that it's Yom Tov. Lutzerich Yom Tov. Lest you run the risk of creating the impression that you can process on Yom Tov, you can thresh on Yom Tov. You want to do it differently. So how do you do it? What's considered deviation? Chada chada. One finger rolling against the next finger. So the thumb over the next finger. Rav Amar, give it the Mishani. Uh, sorry, Rav Avya. Rav, 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 Mishmed Rav Yisif Amar, Chada Tarti. A thumb over two fingers, that's also fine. Rav Amar, give it the Mishani. Once he's deviating, I feel like Chada Kulunam. Even if you take a thumb and you roll it, over your entire hand, that's okay. So you don't have to limit yourself to one finger, to two fingers. You can just rub it over all the fingers. Let's move on to the next topic. So this can be done on Yom Tov, but on Shabbos, you're not allowed to do even this. But let's say you have done this before Shabbos. Now you have a mixture, kernels and skins. And we learned earlier, at the end of yesterday's daft, you can actually fan away the skins as you're about to eat it. It's not considered bitter because it's... Uh, it's for immediate use. Is there a How do you do this? Again, it has to be done in an unconventional manner. So you hold the item at your fingertips and you blow like that. And to show they laughed on this day, they didn't quite accept uh, this, uh, this dictate. They says, look, given the Mishani, once he's going to do it differently than during the weekdays, I feel a cool yodanami. Don't limit yourself to your fingertips. You can have the grain sitting in your entire hand and just blow away. That's also considered derach shinoi and acceptable for Shabbos. Elam Rabbi Lezer, Afmanapech B'yadi Achas. You have the grain sitting in your hand, irrelevant of where it is, if it's in one hand, Umbuchal Koychem, just blow and blow. And that's okay and acceptable for Shabbos as well. So we discussed several uh, different, types, different uh, types of extraction and separation. Let's go down the line. We had moile umilileis. The way Tais explains, referring to extracting the kernels from the stalks themselves. Or, according to one Pshat, Tais was speaking about the um, kernels separate from the stalks, but they're still moist, and uh, it involves more uh, to get the uh, skins off. That's called moile umilileis. Then we had koilif. So he has some kernels, Dry kernels, which allow for very easy peeling. Now we have the concept of burin. How do you separate these skins from the kernels? So we discussed how to do this on Yom Tov, how to do this on Shabbos, and then we discussed how um, this affects the chiv of Maser. When do we say it's pata from Maser, it's just a snack, having an unfinished product? So let's go to moidl first. Rubbing, rolling those um, stalks to extract the kernels. On Yontav, this is mutter, tisha kalacha yad, 
and mutal tzorich yom tov. How do you go about doing this? We have three opinions. Chad achad, one finger rubbing against the other. Chad atarti against two, or even against all his fingers kol yade. And again, the point is because glach yad and mutar yom tov. On Shabbos, you cannot do this. And when it comes to chiv master, if you have one at a time, extract one, have it, one, eat it. Next, it's a chilas right, it's from master. What about peeling grain? On Yom Tov, this is mutter. It's a tzarech hayyayim. It's no worse than butter, which is mutter. It's even better than butter. He has to get to the uh, kernel hidden beneath that skin. So peeling is mutter if it's a tzarech hayyayim. When it comes to Shabbos, we had a chiddush that it's mutter as well. It's considered derech achil, just taking off the peel, the klipa, to get to the item. And the chiddush was, even if he fills more than just uh, he peels more than just one at a time, even filling a kais is mutter. But bechekoi, that's already considered uh, producing something that large amount would be considered a malacha of dash. Likewise, when it comes to maser, we say that if he has. Uh, just uh, one at a time, peels and eats, peels and eats. That's called achilas aray and potter from maser. Anything more than that would be considered a finished product with respect to maser, and be aser bachil would be considered tevel. How do you go about doing bursts? Once he uh, rolled and peeled, now he has a mixture of the um, kernel with his skins. So on yom tov, any amount needed for today can be separated, as we learned yesterday. You can use even a tool, a kanon, a tamchui, because it's mutter for yom use. However, on Shabbos, you can't use a tool. It has to be done totally manually. Menapeach, the Gemara's maskona was, menapeach biyode achas, v'chol koychai. You hold it in one hand, you blow and blow. That's mutter even on Shabbos. It's considered derech achil. Okay, let's make a brief chazor of today's daf. We uh, discussed moilulim b'malilais. So again, we have these uh, stalks with the grain intact. The question is whether it's considered a gemar malacha if you should choose to consume it in that manner. The machlekes in Rebbe and Rosh Yehuda. We have two versions of the machlekes. According to Abayi's first version, we draw a distinction between shibolim, stalks of grain, which aren't generally used in this manner. So Rebbe says, even so, even so. He decides to eat in this manner. It's called gemar malacha and it's chayiv and maser. It's not considered dog, it's not considered a finished grain, there's no chiv. When it comes to kidneys, beans, that's different, people use it in this manner, and it will be considered tevel. According to the second version of Abaye, when it comes to kidneys, all agree it's not tevel, because it's not meant to use in this manner. We learned that there's one unique case where, according to all shittas, even unfinished product can be considered tevel, that's if the levy happens to beat the kain to the farm. He took his maceration while the items were still in their stalk form. We learned from a Pasuk that the Shem Maserishan gets applied and now he has to turn around and give the Trumas Maser embedded in his Maserishan to the Kain. Concluded with several halachas regarding peeling and boyer and the difference between Shabbos, Yom Tov and Maser. And the more did make a very fundamental point here that the definition of Gemar Malach when it comes to Maser is a matter of designation, of purpose. It's prepared for, per- for personal use. That's considered gemar. When it comes to Shabbos, you have to create something. It's an act of, of craftsmanship. And therefore, even though you can have some, something which is considered processed for masa, but unless you really did a significant masa of melechaz machshavas, it's potter on Shabbos. Kotev to and much atzlochah.